Shalom, shalom, shalom. This is another week of a light to the Gentiles. I'm your brother, Makadai Yisrael. Yes, and shalom, everyone. I'm your brother, Bessel El Yahuda Yisrael. Yes, yes, yes. Shalom, brother. How you feeling today? Shalom. I'm, I'm Tub, brother. How you feeling? I'm Tub. I had a wonderful week, wonderful Shabbat. I definitely, uh, we at this time, we want to give all praise and honor to the almighty Yahweh, the creator of the heavens and the earth, in the name of his only begotten son, Yahshua HaMashiach, our high priest, and our soon to come king, redeemer, and deliverer. Man, I thank Abba Yahweh for every step of the way this week, man. He showed me a lot of things this week. I've been, I've been in some serious prayer because of some personal things going on in my life, as me and you have talked about recently. But uh, he's uh, uh, reassuring me that everything is going to be all right, brother. Everything is going to be all right. So total yeah. him for that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, brother. And again, I, and I, hey, I second you on, on that. Um, all praise and an honor and esteem to Yahweh, Yahshua HaMashiach. Yes. Oh, I mean, just so thankful. Um, I was just, I was just meditating this morning on just loving them. This morning when I got up, I was just thinking how much I just love them, you know. So yeah. and meditating on that love, just, just, just meditating on it. Yeah. Yeah, man. That's 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 beautiful. Mm -hmm. And uh, also, brothers and sisters, um, you know, we, we're, we're this. This is a, a new channel. We just we just started, so. As things develop, we, we certain things are coming to our attention. You know, I, I've never been a, a YouTube content creator or anything like that. And like we've already explained, that's not even our purpose is to be content creators. Our purpose is basically to have a discussion and present things to our brothers and sisters who don't know a lot of uh, things that are in the scripture and a lot of things that comes with this path to salvation. So with that, we're going to make errors. Just like any other speaker or presenter, we are human. We make errors. So at this time, I want to uh, correct uh, correct something that I said in my previous videos. Um, a little slip of the tongue, you know, nothing too serious. Because as you know, uh, our job is to you know present truth to you. You know, so we're not trying to take away from the truth. I had a little slip of the tongue with uh, Jeremiah chapter three, verse fourteen. So I'm gonna read it to y'all just to correct myself. Um, it reads this. It says, return, O backsliding children, says Yahweh, for I am married unto you. I will take you one from a city and two from a family, and I will bring you to Zion. So that was a mistake because in that in that first video, I believe I said he's going to only take you one of a family, two of a city. But it was a slip of the tongue. Sometimes, you know, we got so many scriptures in our head. Sometimes we, we're presenting, we, we, we're gunning. And it was a little slip of the tongue. So I apologize to everybody out there. And um, one other thing last week that I did slip when we was uh, talking about Moshe or Moses, um, I said that, you know, one man cannot, you know, be the only one that be there for the entire nation. As, as Moses, uh, and I said his stepfather, his stepfather is not the uh, correct term. The term is his father-in-law, Jephro. You know, Jeffro was his father-in-law. So I wanted to correct correct myself on that. Sometimes I talk, my mind moves a little faster than my mouth sometimes. You know, it comes out my speech sometimes. You might hear me stutter a little bit. That's because my mind moves really, really fast. One time I said that in, a, in one of my songs because back in the day, your brother Makadai Yisrael used to be in a rap group locally. We got a little bit of uh, acclaim. We was also wrote, uh, wrote about in some of the uh, newspapers locally because we was making a little bit of noise. You know, that was a dream when I was younger. You know how it is. Everybody want to be a rapper and everything like that. And then one of my raps, I said, my mind moves 100 miles an hour to eat. And that's because that's how Yahweh made me. My mind is always moving, always moving. My, I'm always thinking. I'm always trying to be a step or two ahead of my movements because I want to be prepared and I want to be able to do what i need to do to keep everything moving you know what i'm saying so i just wanted yeah. to clear that stuff up so today we got a good one for you brothers and sisters today we are going to actually talk about you know how does it um let me let me go to the scripture because i you know just like last time i don't want to mess it up i'm just going to read the scripture and this is the title yeah. of, 
of today's discussion. And it's basically, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. That is the name of the uh, title. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. And as y'all know, that is one of the greatest commandments, second to loving Yahweh with all your heart, all your soul, and all your might. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and go to the first scripture, and then we're going to have a discussion about it. All right. Let me put it up here on your uh, screen for you. Here we go. This is out of Leviticus 19 and 18. And today I'm going to be reading out of my uh, my Schofield Bible. And my Schofield, I don't read out of this one that often. Usually I'm in my uh, I'm in an old Bible that my mother gave me one one year. I, I, I don't even remember how old I was, but I got I got many Bibles, man. But yeah. for some reason, this old Bible that my mother gave me is like my favorite. Yeah. It's a King James Version. It ain't nothing special about it. It's just a, a regular K KJV Bible. But uh, I'm going to get out of the school field today, the New King James Version. And it reads, Thou shalt not take vengeance nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people, but, thy, but you shall love thy neighbor as thyself. I am Yahweh. Let me repeat that one more time. You shall not take vengeance nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people. But you shall love your neighbor as yourself. I am Yahweh. Hallelujah. I think I wrote it in our KJV at the bottom of the screen. But anyway, so this 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 is plain and simple. And if y'all pay close attention to the word in here, it says, "Thou shalt not avenge nor bear grudge against the children of thy people." Mm -hmm. Who are the who are your people? So that's that's a key to who your neighbor is. Your people. Come you on, know, man. The people that's in your nation. The people that's striving. That's living the same way you are and striving toward one common goal. You know what I mean? And what makes a nation is not just being here in captivity in America. What makes a nation is actually having your own land, having your own language, having your own economical system, having your own resources, having, you know, it's so much to this. It's so much to us making a nation of people. You know, we can't just say, OK, well, here we are in, uh, in America. You know, th these people, everybody, every single person here is your neighbor because that's not true. Everybody that's is right. not your neighbor. That's you right. Know, so before I pass it back to brother, brother Betzel L, I'm gonna show y'all one thing real quick. Let me go. I'm gonna share my screen. I'm gonna show y'all something. And I and I advise everybody out there, if you if you are new to this channel, we we appreciate you tuning in. Please like, share, subscribe, comment if you can. You know, because we want to we want to reach more people and get this out here because this this is working, man. A little bit late. I'm going to give you all a testimony, but I want to show you all something real quick. This is the blue letter Bible. You can go if you got an iPhone, if you got an Android, go to your app store, download the blue letter Bible. Because one thing that I like about the blue letter Bible is it comes with a lot of different tools you can use. For instance, this has a, a Intellia or a concordance in it. And it breaks down the Hebrew as well as the uh, English. And so I'm going to go to your neighbor in that script right here. You see it's H in the Strongs. It's H7453. And this is the word Rhea. I'm going to get him to pronounce it for you. Strongs H7453. Rhea. 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 So that's the word for neighbor in Hebrew. Rhea. And this is how I translate. See that? So who is your neighbor? It's a friend, companion, your fellow, another person, a friend, but intimately your fellow citizen. So again, that's who your neighbor is, your brother, you know, all these different meanings, because that's how Hebrew words, Hebrew words have so many different meanings in them. So we wanted to break down that that's what a neighbor means. So now I'm going to pass it to Brother Eric. You got anything to uh, add, Brother Betzel L? Yeah. Well, um, just to go, you know, follow up on that, you know, just just wanted to add to it, which really not adding anything to it, but just to, I would say, to expand, expand on it, just to, for more clarification. So let's get down to business about a neighbor. Okay, so uh, the normal... Uh, you know, we would think a neighbor is just like uh, your your next door, like people who who live in your community. Um, that that's that's the that's the 
you pr pretty much here in the U.S. and probably abroad, we when someone says neighbor, you know, you think it's someone who lives in your community. And so, but that 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 can be true, but that's not always true. So you you, you know, it, it's, it's, um, as as brother Mekadai, uh showed us, you know, she, he broke down the, the the term neighbor in the Hebrew, and it's, it says that you know it, it talks about your neighbor more than just someone who lives next door or across the street from you. Right. It was saying, uh, you know, a person that's a friend, you know, a companion. So it was it was telling you that that word neighbor is not it's not about the geographical location, but it still can incorporate that. So you know you can have a neighbor that's next door to you, but yet that that person is not a neighbor. Meaning, like in the sense of the neighbor in the terms that we we see it in as someone who lives close to you, yeah, you can say, I'm not going to take that definition away. I'm going to say, okay, yeah, that's a neighbor. But in the, in this context, it's saying that the neighbor is a person who is a companion, you know, who is a friend. And that's what it's talking about in this context. So we have to identify that so then we won't make the mistake of, uh, believing that everyone that lives in proximity to in a, a in a certain radius of us is our neighbor so therefore we then put out make ourselves vulnerable to be harmed because we're accepting everybody is our neighbor and that's just not true we have to understand who our neighbor is mm -hmm. because it's so important to know who your neighbor is so that that way you can know how to respond to things, how to treat people, because you cannot treat everybody the same. No. Don't don't fall and keep falling into that category because some are not your neighbor. So but but then some are your neighbor. So, yeah, I just wanted to add that. Yeah, absolutely. And then one other thing, uh, just to, to uh, piggyback off of what Brother Batsuel just said, you have to understand that. You know, this particular script that we just read is out of the Torah and the Torah was given to the nation of Israel. You know, Moshe is basically taking these commandments that Yahweh gave him to give to the people of Israel. No other people. OK, mm -hmm. so you got to understand who are, who is being presented with this information, Israel and who are who are Israel neighbors at this time. And, and then you also you got to understand who was in the wilderness with Israel when these commandments was given. Okay. Exactly. So, right. and that's, that's a clue right there. You know, we know that Israel first captivity was Mitzrayim or Egypt for 430 years. And when they left out, yeah, a great multitude of, of Egyptians went out with them, you know? Mm -hmm. And so these are people that are in close proximity, pros, excuse me, close proximity um, that were probably friends you know, because if you go into a captivity, you're going to make friends of other nations of people. But, you know, when you cleave the Israel, you are assimilating into the nation of Israel. So basically, these are all Israelites. OK, mm -hmm. so that's something to, uh, you know, keep in mind as well. And then once they got into the land, the land of actual Israel, who were the people surrounding that land? It was all black people. It was all brown people, you mm -hmm. know. You know, because Israel is in northeast Northeast Africa on Africa's tectonic plate. You know, the heathen will tell you, yeah, it's in the Middle East. You know, that's because they want to they want to separate us from the land. They want to separate us from that that geographic location because they don't want us to think we have any inheritance there. But that's not true. That is our land. And Yeshua is going to make sure we get it when, when that day comes. So. Yeah. That said, before you move on, I want to yes, add sir. something. Bro. Go yes, ahead. Sir, bro. So also, um, oh, speaking of that, and when he says heathen, he means the Gentile nations. Yeah. Um, another thing is, is that I just want to give an example. Like Brother Macadai, he does not live in my community, and I do not live in his community. Mm -hmm. But and with respect to the neighbors that this that the Torah is talking about, he and I are neighbors. Yeah. See, see, even though we we live maybe maybe like it could be probably about fourteen or fifteen miles away from each other, yeah. Um, 
But we, in this, when we speak of neighbor, when this when when this word speaks of neighbor, it's talking about we, this would make him and our neighbors. But yet, I have people who live directly in my community right now that live across, maybe across the uh, the uh, driveway from me, and um, but we're not we're not considered neighbors. Right. Yep. So I just want to clear that up. And some people are not neighborly. <laughs> That's right. You know, some people, you know, could, could live in that close proximity and hate your guts. Exactly. You, know, you really consider that person a neighbor? Right. We're going to gonna definitely talk more about this as we move Sorry about on. the yawning. Yeah, go again. I'm sorry about that yawning. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah I'm, not, brother, I'm not bored. I'm not bored no, at all. Yeah, brother, brother Betzoel, as, as we stated last week, just getting back from Africa. And y'all, and what is it? A seven-hour time difference? Yes, it's a seven-hour time frame. So, and and um, in Africa, where I was in East Africa, in Tanzania, yeah. so we're seven seven hours. It's seven hours ahead, so it's twelve here now. So that means it would be um seven p.m. or nineteen hundred hours there. Yeah. And so, what it is too? Again, my body is still adjusting because it was steady adjusting while I was there. So, um, yeah, I have not completely i believe recovered all the way you know back to normal so yeah. i'll be on and periodically <laughs> sorry about that that's absolutely it, it, you know you'll you'll be back soon enough so now we're gonna go let me put my glasses on real quick we're gonna go to um the next scripture i'm gonna put it up on the screen for y'all i'll take this one away um i believe it's uh luke 10 29 through 37 but we're going to only put up a portion of it because it's a long scripture. Yeah. So Luke 10, 29 through 37. Um, I am reading from uh, the scriptures and um, the Institute for Scripture Research is this who uh, this version, uh, this version of the Torah, uh, who, who uh, put together this version of the Torah, the scriptures. The reason why I like this, this, uh, this version is because it converts all the names back to the, what they were in Hebrew, which then gives you a vision of what it's supposed to have been anyway, you know? Right. So anyway, let me, let me, let me read, read the, uh, the whole text for you. And I'm starting, it's 10 through 29. I'm starting at 29. So, and that is Luke um, 10, 29 through 37. But he, wishing to declare himself righteous, said to Yahshua, and who is my neighbor? Um, so, oh, I'm, yeah, so, uh, okay, yeah, who is my neighbor? In reply, Yahshua said, a certain man was going down from Yerushalayim and Jericho and fell among robbers, who both stripping and beating him, went away leaving him half dead. And by a coincidence, a certain priest was going down that way. And when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. And likewise, a Luite also, when he came to the place and seeing him pass by on the other side. But a certain Samariani journeying came upon him. When he saw him, he had compassion on him. And he went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. And having placed him on his own beast, he brought him, I mean, he brought him to an end and looked after him. And going out on the next day, he took out two denarii, gave them to the innkeeper, and said to him, Look after him, and whatever, and whatever more you spend, I shall repay you when I return. Who then of these three do you think was neighbor to him who fell among the robbers? And he said, he who showed compassion on him. And Yahshua said to him, go and do likewise. Go and do likewise. Hallelujah. 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 Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so right there, I mean, coming from salvation, coming from the king, coming from the one who created all things. He was there in the beginning. So he's telling us, Right there, what a neighbor is, uh, the, the, the being of a neighbor, you know, one who, he didn't even know the man, It did the, 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 the scripture didn't say he knew the man, he just, the other two, they were even, a priest walked by, a Levite, they went by and they just left the man in the road. But if you notice, it is the Shabbat, right? 
Shemaroni came by, and and I'm using the Hebrew words of, of these these people as mm -hmm. So, um, and I like to get into that because that'll help us to start seeing things how they really are or work. Right. And so anyway, but anyway, so he came by as a neighbor in his heart. And what he did was he took care of the man. Now that goes to show you that you don't have to know a person to be a neighbor to them. That goes to show you because what it, when in, in this side of things is telling telling us that how we should be with what makes us a neighbor. So now this one right here is subjective. It's subjective. It's telling you, Yahshua is telling you, us, me, how to be a neighbor. Mm -hmm. So it's important for you because see, see here's the issue with, with us as a people. We want to be the one on the receiving end. Like, I want somebody to treat me neighborly. Right. So, but at the end of the day, you know, you reap what you sow. So now I need to start with me. So hallelujah, thanks to almighty Yahweh and his son Yeshua. He put down in here to tell you yourself, how are you, how you are to be a neighbor? What makes you a neighbor? And that is right there what Brother Makadai has said earlier in that definition, having compassion. That's a neighbor. Yeah. So right here we see the he the other the other two that went by, they had no compassion. So therefore they were missing that neighbor in themselves. But it is the Sumerian, but right here uh, in this in, in, in this scripture, when he changes the back, Shemaroni, he he had the neighbor in him. He had, he had the neighbor this in him, if you want to say a word. But he was a neighbor, right? So pretty much that's you know that right there covers uh, what I you know what I wanted to say about it. The Macadai, do you want to add anything to it? Yeah, real quick. Uh, let me take a sip real quick. The only thing I really want to add, um, to make it as short as possible, is we got to understand when it comes to the Torah and this way of life. Like I mentioned before, you know, the Torah is designed to show us how to love each other. You know, Yahweh gave the Torah to the nation of Israel as a law system to show us how to interact with each other, how to love him how to love your brothers and sisters, how to love your neighbor. And, and that's basically what it is. It's, you know, you, you take the Torah and you apply it to your life. You know what I mean? You don't just read it and then, you know, put it away and then don't act on it. You know, the commandments, you know, and the, and the laws and the, and the precepts, everything that's in here are meant for us to not only study, not just read it, you got to study this and then you mm -hmm. have to apply it to your life. So when you apply it to your life, then, you know, like Brother Betzoel say, you're going to you're going to have that compassion for your neighbor. You're going to actually show him that, man, look, I love you. Brother, I, I, this is this is how I feel about you. So I'm going to do X, Y and Z to show mm -hmm. you, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like if you love your if you love your brother, you know, you're not going to you're not going to kill your brother. You're not going to you know, you're not going to shoot right. your brother down in the street. But we're going to get into that and we're going to show you, you know, certain laws that are meant to show us how to actually love. Because you got to understand, we are people that's disconnected from each other. We've always been that way. We always then looked at our brother with an evil eye, or looked at our sisters with an evil eye, because you know a lot of this stuff was taught to us, you know, in slavery and Jim Crow, and separate us, separate family from family, and and you know show show us how to take the dark skinned brother and hate on the light skinned brother, you know, and ver and vice versa with the sisters, you know. You know, take mm -hmm. the bigger sister and the skinnier sister and put them against each other. You know, so it's always been a war inside our community. But, you know, the Torah is there to show us how to love each other and have mm -hmm. compassion and really show your neighbor that you love them. That's all I, I really wanted to add. And um, we're going to really we're going to really get into this, man, because, yeah, you know, this is a very, very important topic in our community because we are so, you know, disconnected from each other. It's, it's not funny at all. You know, it's, it's, it's really sad to see the state of this world 
when all of these nations, you know, can come together and help build, you know, you take the Japanese, they are really serious about, you know, building with each other, you know, Russia, you know, the European Union, you know, these are, these are countries of people that are really compassionate about building up their kingdom, but mm-hmm. they don't take us, you know, you, mm-hmm. you look at one of us the wrong way and it's a problem, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And so again, now, uh, and just thinking about that, as you're speaking, when we talk about us, that's why like, okay, Michael Jackson song, we heard it. I'm looking at the man in the mirror. Mm-hmm. Um, start with yourself. Do you have the neighbor in you? Yeah. That's that. See, that's the thing that I that this this scripture right here is 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 telling you. You need to start. We need. I'm talking about us. I'm talking about me. Yeah. Start with having the neighbor in myself. Now, can I be a neighbor? You know, to my brother, to my brother, to my sisters. Can I be a neighbor? So, what 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 are the what are the values of a neighbor? Are they in Are they in my heart? Are they in my ruach? Because if I don't have it in me, then how can I be it? Right. So let's start with yourself. Understand what a neighbor is and identify that and become that if that's not what you are. And pray, ask Yahweh to give it to you. Right. Ask Yahweh, ask Yahweh to give that to you because it pleases him. He's telling you right there, you know, the qualities of a neighbor, he's giving it to you, right? So therefore these qualities are pleasing to him because he's giving them to you. So if you don't have them or you with you're without them, then pray and ask Yahweh for these things. Absolutely. Hallelujah. So Hallelujah. the next scripture we're gonna go to is in uh one of my favorite out of the four glad tidings or good news. Um sometimes it switches with me, but uh most of the time it's it's Matthew, Matt and Yahoo. He's he's one of my favorite out of the four. Um and I, to be honest with you, I love them all. I love them all anyway. But you know how certain books you gravitate a little bit more to, yeah. especially these yeah. are four different, four different apostles, four different yeah. points of view. You know, for yeah. some reason, I just personally gravitate towards more towards Matthew. So um, mm-hmm. that's going to be my next scripture is in Matthew. I'm going to put it up here. Um, it's in Matthew 22. And I'm going to start at about. 35, and then I'm going to read down to 40. All right. And it, and it reads, then one of them, a lawyer, asked him, Yahshua, a question, testing Yahshua, testing him, and saying, Master, which is the great commandment in the Torah? And Yahshua said unto him, you shall love Yahweh, your Elohim, with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the Torah and the prophets. So on them too. Those are the two main commandments. So on them too. Like I said a few weeks ago, you know, I, I gave you an example with Yahweh. You know, you, you have Yahweh here and then you have your neighbor here. And under Yahweh, you know, if you love Yahweh, you're not going to have any any gods before him it's sort of like with the with the neighbor so right here we love our neighbor as you love yourself and if you if you love yourself you know good and well you're not going to mur- you're not going to murder your, your neighbor you know mm-hmm. so that's in the commandments that's where you find that you know right. in, the, in the 10 commandments you do not murder anybody okay definitely not your brothers and sisters definitely not your neighbor you don't you don't murder if you love your neighbor you're not going to steal okay Cause when you're still, you're stealing from somebody and on, usually man. it's in close proximity to you. So you, if yep. you love your neighbor, you're not going to steal. If Come you on, love man. your neighbor, you're not going to covet his wife or his car or his house. You know, you're going to exactly. work hard. You're going to work hard. You're going to get a job or career. You're going to go out and build your own life and get your own wife, your own car, your own house, have your own things, you know? So these are examples of, how you actually love your neighbor, how you actually love your brothers and sisters, you know, you know, going, you know, to the assemblies or, you know, which a lot of you go to churches and stuff like that. You know, you cannot go to a church and sit there and and actually say you love your brothers and sisters, but you sitting there talk about them behind your back every chance you get. That is not love. You know, what is the action? 
You know, that's that's a sin. Back, it's called backbiting. You're exactly. not supposed to backbite. You're not supposed to talk about your brothers and sisters. If you have a if you have a problem with your brother, then you're supposed to go to him and you're supposed to resolve it. You're supposed to talk it out. You know, sit down as men, sit down as brothers and hash out any problem that you have with each other. Same with you sisters. If you have a problem with each other, stop all the gossiping. Gossiping is a sin. You know, talking about each other. Worry about your household. Get your house in order with your children. Make sure your children got what they need. Make sure you um being a help me helpmate to your, your husband. Make sure he has what he needs. You know, the woman is the backbone of the family. You know, she makes everything work in the family. And if you're not, if you if you're too busy worrying about, you know, what what Keisha and them doing around the way, you know, gossiping with them, how are you gonna keep your house straight? You know, so these are things that we have to learn. We have to come to. And that's what the Torah sheds lights on. You know, you don't gossip. You don't talk about each other. But you show that you love your brother and your sister by doing things for them. You know, if your, your brother and sister in need of something, you know, some some people might be unfortunate, might not have a way to make it to to the assembly. You know, drive them there yourself, you know, offer your services. You know what I mean? Yep. Pick them up, take them home, do what you need to do to to help each other out because if you if Yahweh bless you then and give you the means to 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 do things and be successful and 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 have a comfortable life we have to be able to bless our brothers and sisters as well and that's how we show that we love our neighbor you know yes sir yep so yeah and um so i'm going to show you some something so i'm going to say something right here that that people may may not agree with, but I, I, hey, it is what it is when it comes down to loving loving your neighbor as yourself, right? So when you find out that um, there's something that's de detrimental to your people, right? So then you just say, well, hey, yeah, but everybody does it, so I'm gonna keep continue doing it. That's not loving. That's not loving your neighbor. Like like well, I'm gonna give you an example. I'm gonna just and this right here, people may this this might uh, get a little people rattled. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say like, okay, so let's talk about what's on TV. Okay, so you got the Housewives shows of Atlanta. I'm gonna use these for as many as other things on there. Uh, you have uh, these 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 shows like uh, um, Tyra Tyra Banks had the one show where uh, it was the the models. Yeah, uh, what is it called? Me out, bro. Uh, Banks, uh, top models, yeah, something like it. Yeah, she had that, and um, so we're talking about that the housewives, and also let's talk about the BT awards and all these uh, awards uh shows. Well, so what you know, I don't want to participate, and this is loving my neighbors, I don't want to participate in them shows. So if it's left up to me, they will not be on my TV, yeah. Now, you know, so I and and that's loving my neighbors. Why? Because I know it's poisoning the minds of 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 our people. Like you know, the the youth that's coming up, the young people, and some of the adults and older ones. Because it's making what is sin look like is is glamorizing sin and making people do it. You know, just thinking it's okay. And and I'm gonna give you I'm gonna give you some examples. Um, like for an example, um, um, I was. You know, because, you know, I, I uh, you know, the TV is on. It's not me watching it, but I'm going to just say sometimes the TV is on in my house. I walk by and um, Nicki Minaj, uh, I saw one time she was on stage and the same thing, you know, with the other uh, new Nicki Minaj. They on stage with like no clothes on, Holly Leotards or nothing, bikinis, and just laying down and opening their legs up. And so um, I'm like, well... That right there is a problem because about it. You know, first of all, first of all, it always says that you know a woman should be modest. You know, you know, so that that right there is the opposite of it. You know, you should a woman shouldn't be showing her nakedness like that. You no, know, not not to the world, but only to her husband. And so it's teaching now young people is desensitizing them, and so now you can see it actually manifesting on everyday life. I see women now walking the streets like that and doing things with that kind of stuff on like it's normal, right? And so it promotes all kinds of sexual immorality and all kinds of stuff. And it, it, it you know, it destroys the mind of people. And so now I would say, cut that mess off. Don't give it the ratings. 
let it go down that way. So that's loving my neighbor. I won't. I don't, I don't want to participate in it. Right. right. And so, you know, on the other hand, let's look at uh, like even the things we eat. And this is going to be real fast, Brother Macadai, because I've said this before and I'll say it again. I'll be telling people, you know, when you eat, OK, when you eating crabs and stuff, lobster, you eating shrimp, you eating oysters. Look at the oysters. You eating up. They they definitely clean the water. Yeah. These stuff clean the water so we we'll have clean food, fish, eat the ones with the scales and the fence. But if you eating up the filters, now the clean things are contaminated. For us, your brother, brothers who's trying to live right, we want our help. So, you know, even in that alone, that's not loving your neighbor. Now, you now, now if I continue, I say, well, you know what? I don't care what happens to me. I'm going to continue to eat crabs. I say, I say that. I'm still not, I mean, I'm not loving myself and I'm not loving my neighbor because my neighbor may be like, you know what? I want to eat clean. You know, you taking all the filter, you taking all the filter out the water. So is that being a neighbor? Is that loving your neighbor or is not? So, you know, these are the things that we do all the time, you know, especially I'm going to just go point into Christianity. I'm not, you know, I don't want to make everybody think that, you know, oh yeah, he's just bashing Christians. No, 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 no. Let's take, let's identify Christianity and let's identify that separates yourself from the religion as a person that has adopted the ways of the religion and then recognize that it's faulty mm -hmm. and, and, it, and it allows these things and it is not it is it is not trying to turn from them or get you to turn from them it is unique. it's very sneaky it makes you think that it's okay but um yeah I'll, I'll stop there because I can go on and on and on yeah man yeah, because it's, it's such a deep, deep topic and there's so many different facets to it. You know, like you said, uh, certain certain ways that we came up in uh, Christianity, it makes it seem that it's OK to do a lot of this stuff, you know, that we can clearly see in the Torah that we should just not be doing. You know what I mean? So it's not, you know, brothers and sisters, we're not trying to bash you for wanting to you know, achieve righteousness. We just see some some fault in the, the the organizations that try to make it seem like they are all about righteousness when in actuality they are about lawlessness okay i hope i i i got y'all to understand that you know what i mean yeah. just because it seems to be righteous doesn't mean that it's righteous okay seeming and actually being are two totally different things and when yeah. you really look underneath the hood you can look at a beautiful car you know, cherry red paint, you know, brand new tires. And it seemed that it is fire. It seemed that, ain't that the word them young folks use today? That car is fire. Yeah. When you open that trunk, when you open that, that hood up, <laughs> it's a gopher wheel underneath of the, uh, oh, <laughs> underneath of that, you know? Exactly. That, that yeah. engine is trash. Then you can exactly. see, it seemed like it was a nice car, but it really ain't. You know, and that's exactly. that's why we're presenting this stuff to you because we want to peel back, you know, the layers and get y'all to start seeing that okay, it's it's, it's some it's some problems here, and you know, yeah. let's, let's let's open up our eyes. Yes, you like that menorah, that menorah lamp in the background. Let's let's light these candles. You know, Yahshua is the light of the world, and let's yeah. let's follow him. You know, yes. let him lead the way. You know, and show us yeah. some of this stuff that we've been lacking in. Okay. Yeah. 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 And let me say this real quick, brother. Like, like I want. To, I also want to say say like, okay. So like on the housewives, they show all this glamour, these beautiful um, mansions, houses, and all these different things and everything. And but the women are supposed to be housewives, but they're not doing anything that uh, is the definition of a housewife. They are materialistic. They're bite backbiting. They yeah. are chasing after money. And, and all the things of this world. Yeah. And so the bottom line is they put that as up as a housewife. And so therefore all the young women, um, this is what they think being a housewife is all about. And so, you know, um, and it's totally against Yahweh. It is the opposite of what he want a woman to be. They are loud, obnoxious. Yahweh says that, you know, the meekness and quietness of a woman is of great value. And so here's to him. So here's the thing right here. That's the opposite of that, right? They don't, they're not showing them taking care of the family, the children, you know, taking care of the home, you know, being, being, being a helpmate to their husband. No, all he's showing them is, is grabbing 
grabbing for material, money, cursing each other out, and all these different things, having a filthy mindset. And so, you know, by me participating, if I participate and I watch that, I'm making the ratings go up. And if I'm making the ratings go up, all I'm doing is harming my neighbor because it stays on TV. And so, yeah, every you know, the, the people, the younger people or whoever watching, you know, it gets in their spirit and then they, they they become that. So this is this is what I'm talking about. This is how we talk about loving your neighbor by doing even things like that that are, that are subtle or behind the scene. You wouldn't even think how you harming your neighbor by sitting there letting the ratings go up or helping the ratings go up on some stuff that's trashing the minds of your people. Yeah, it's polluting the mind. Yeah, that's what it's doing. So yeah, okay, brother. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it, it, that, that's an excellent point, brother, because it's teaching our women that this stuff is okay and it's not okay. Yeah, it's not okay to live like how these women are portraying, you know, the uh, Atlanta housewives and love and hip hop and all this other foolishness that's out there on, on, on the TV. You know, it's desensitizing our young women to think that this is how a woman is really supposed to act with her husband. Exactly. No, no, no that's exactly. not how you're supposed to interact with your husband. You know, exactly. some of these women act like they don't even want to be married, the ones that are. Exactly. You know, they keep taking all these trips everywhere. They yeah, keep, uh, dressing half naked, you know, twerking all the time, doing all exactly. this foolishness, man. That ain't the way. Yeah. That ain't the way a young woman should be behaving. And know what? Know what? Brother was even was even what's even so sneaky. First of all, if they don't know, and, and Yahweh is all knowing. He ain't give them his name because they were blaspheming. But they yeah. go, but they, but they think they referring to, to the Almighty Creator Yahweh. But they could, but they they refer as God. You see, yeah. the thing about it is, they be thinking for all that nasty and filthiness. They get up and say, "I want to give thanks to God." Yeah, like okay, so I want to give thanks to God, and you doing everything that's against Him. Even when you look at the award shows, the first thing I want to give honor and thanks to my God, my Lord and Savior. They get up there and they say that, but I'm like, you just, you just did soft porn right out in the open, right in front of the world's eyes. Right. Open your legs up for the whole world to look into it. But after you got done, you jumped up and came up there and said, you gonna give thanks to, you know, your God, Lord, Creator. But thanks, thank, I'm, I'm thanking, thanking Yahweh that they didn't use, you, you, y'all don't know His name, you're not using His name. Right, because because you would be in a lot of trouble, I believe, if you would use in His name. So when you when you giving thanks, you're not giving it to Him. You giving it to the wicked one because you're doing the work of the wicked one. Yeah. And so again, I go back to why would I then keep boosting your rating, the ratings for that? Because it's fooling all, it's fooling so many people. They think that wow, you can eat, you know, yeah. If I achieve these things, I'm at the I'm at the the height of everything when I get all the material, all the money in the audience to shake my hind paws. Mm. I'm at the height of things. <laughs> this right here is pleases God, they say. You know, if yeah. I want to use the word, you know, thank you. They they I want to give thanks to my Lord and Savior. You know, I you know, mm. I just I just did everything that was filthy. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, brother. And, and, and one more thing before we move on to the next scripture. You know, think about this, brothers and sisters. What is the most, you know, blaspheme supposedly be, you know, sacred name out there? You know, think about it for a second. Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ. Jesus. Mm -hmm. The most blasphemed name. Think about it. How people curse using the word Jesus. Mm -hmm. they, they use the word Jesus during sex. They do it when they, you know, telling somebody off or flipping somebody off. You know, Jesus Christ, you're getting on my nerves or whatever they say. Yeah. They always yeah. blaspheme in that name, Jesus Christ. Right. You know what I'm saying? But you, yeah. do you actually think for a million years that Yahweh, Yahshua, will allow you to blaspheme that name like that? Oh. No. No. Yeah. It was not, that's why they took it out of your mouth. Sure did. That's why they took it out of your mouth. And to, if you if you are called, then they'll that's reintroduce right. it to you because they know then you got some act right. That's right. You know? All right, brother. I'm going to go ahead and uh, put the next one up here. Let me take mm -hmm. that one down. You know? We're going to be moving along here. This is a, this is a one. I'm, I'm really enjoying this discussion right here. This is a wonderful discussion. Hallelujah. You know? Hallelujah. Praise Yahweh. All right. There it is, brother. Okay. 
is uh, do not. Okay, we. This is Proverbs twenty-seven ten. Yeah. Um, do not forsake your friend or a friend of your family, and do not go to your relative's house when disaster strikes you. Better is a neighbor nearby than a relative far away. Again, that's Proverbs twenty-seven ten. So you know it's telling telling us the value of a neighbor. That's why in the in the with the in the last uh, scripture we read, and it was telling how the subjective of having the neighbor and you, the ways of a neighbor and you. And here it's telling you the is giving you um high uh, information on how valuable and having a neighbor is. Yeah. So yeah, and 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 it talks about right there as we were talking before about geography that just because someone lives in your proximity or in what they would call your neighborhood, you know, across the street, you know, or next door, um, it does not necessarily mean when it comes to neighbor in these terms in the scripture right here, it doesn't, it doesn't, that's not the quality necessarily the qualification of a neighbor uh, by being close to you. And this right here is telling you, you know, they, they're far away. It's telling you right there, um, you know, do not do not forsake a friend or a friend. And as we talked about, as uh, Brother Macadai looked even in the Hebrew uh, definitions of it, broke down that, you know, a neighbor is a friend, someone that, you know, a companion. And so right here, it's, so it's saying a friend or do not forsake a friend or a friend or, or um, friend of a friend of a friend of a friend. Do not forsake a friend or a friend of your family. Do not go to a relative's house when disaster strikes you. Better, better is a neighbor nearby um, than a relative far away. So even down to, okay, it's telling you that, you know, just having a, somebody nearby that's a neighbor is good to have that. Mm -hmm. Even in close proximity, it's good to have a neighbor, someone who's a friend, who has compassion, um, you know, this this is what because because if you don't have if you can't have neighbors in the in the area that you're in, this is it's, you can't if you don't have neighbors in the area that you're in, someone that you know, uh, and you can't be a neighbor to people in the area that you're in, it's a problem there because it's telling you right here it's better to have that than yeah. have to run to a relative that's far away. Yeah. You know the value of just having a neighbor close by. Mm -hmm. You know because it's about a neighbor. It's good. Another and basically, it's good that it's good to have a neighbor or have neighbors, mm -hmm. and whether they be far away, whether they be close by, neighbors, neighbor is is good to have. Absolutely, but brother. You can you can um, if you have anything. You know, the only thing I will say is I'm gonna use my own neighborhood as an example. Um, in my neighborhood, I have a mixed neighborhood. Um, it's about half and half, uh, majority, uh, black and majority, um, uh, half, half majority black, half majority white. We do have, um, on my, my particular court, cause I, I live in a townhouse in my court. Uh, we have, uh, um, an Asian family or at least the, the, I think the man is Asian, but his wife might be white. And we have an Indian, um, brother that lives down, down the street from me. He's, he's very, very, very polite. He walks his dog every morning. We speak, you know, sometimes mm -hmm. when I'm taking my children to uh, daycare in the morning, uh, he he's out there with his dog. They so, you know, excited to see his dog. And, okay. um, you know, we, we really, you know, are friendly to one another. And, and that's how mm -hmm. it is in my neighborhood. Now, we do have certain people in my neighborhood who will not speak to you. Mm -hmm. You know, these people are not neighbors. Yeah. You know, these yeah, are the people on. that we try to avoid. We don't want we don't want anything to do with you because at the end of the day, you know, with me and my wife, we are friendly people. So mm -hmm. if, if we establish eye contact, you know, we're going to speak to you. We're going to ask yeah. you about your day. We're going to be generally concerned if we see that you're in any kind of distress. But sometimes, you know, things happen. You know, you might need help. You might need your car tire change. You might need, you know, the bar. Mm -hmm. You never know. You know, yeah. a community is is designed to be self-sufficient. We supposed to be able to help one another to, you know, get through life, you know, and that was the whole, you know, goal of, you know, moving to a land filled with milk and honey, you know, giving us a land so that we could, you know, be able to strive together as a community, as a nation. 
you know, mm -hmm. and then come together under uh, Yahweh. You know what I mean? But, you know, nowadays, you know, back when we was younger, you know, everybody knew each other in the neighborhood. You know, mm -hmm. we knew everybody mother. We knew all the children. We knew we knew everybody, you mm -hmm. know, and we were all friendly. We was all cool with each other. Sometimes, you know, you get in your little fights, you know, but, you know, you, you make up the next day and then you continue on, you know, building together in the neighborhood. You know, we used to cut each other grass, shovel each other snow, you know, just be there, bar, you know, sugar, bread, whatever you need, eggs. You know, we were there for each other. Well, that That is like, you know, not even hardly seen nowadays, you know. You know, we got a few people in our neighborhood, like I said, that we are friendly with, that we know on name basis, but it's only a few. It's only a handful, you know, and people yeah. are constantly moving out, you know, and, uh, you know, I, I, my next door neighbor is is moving and I'm, I'm really sorry to see him go, brother named Tim and his wife, you know, because they, they, they've been really, really cool ever since we moved here. Because me and my wife been here about four years, going on five years now. But uh, they've been really, really awesome, especially the husband. He's been really cool with me. I call him a friend. I call him a neighbor because we've really helped each other. We help cut each other grass and everything, you know. So, you know, that's all I, I really want to add is that, you know, when, you, when you're neighborly, you know, you're actually helping to build with each other. You know, it's not just lip service. We're, we're actually helping to build. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah, sir. We also yeah. got to pay, pay attention to this, too. Um, a neighbor, somebody can be doing things for selfish gains too, and we got to be careful. Don't mistake them as a neighbor. Yeah. Right. And and so you, they could be in your neighbor, in your actual neighborhood, and live in close proximity to you. But but uh, I've, I've I've experienced that where a person came out and helped me do some things, um, and uh, and a uh, husband and wife, and then. The uh, husband left the wife, and then me being neighborly back, I um, I felt obligated, yeah, to help. You know, like if you need some help, yeah, you've been my neighbor. You came out, and you know, you they helped me out with some stuff, and I didn't even ask them. They just came out and helped me. But when the husband left, the woman kept um, calling on me, you know, and so. Um, but then I just I thought she was a neighbor, but then I stopped, you know getting the spirit that she wasn't a neighbor. Mm. In other words, she was looking for opportunity. And so then you have to also be wise, you know what I mean? Like the scripture says, it's be as harmless as a dove, be wise as a serpent. Yeah. I, th I think that, you know, I, 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 I just didn't see, I started seeing, okay, you you starting to uh, call me and, 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 and I felt like it was, she was doing it because she was looking for more than a neighbor. But yet I'm a married man, if you know what I'm talking about. Right. So, so I had to always call my wife whenever she asked me for something. I would be like, let me go get my wife so she can help. And then yeah. it was starting to get out of hand that I had to start coming out of my house and I would see her. And I would like be great. I would back back into my garage to duck her because I didn't want to see it. Because I felt I felt that, you know, that she was being deceitful. You know what I mean? She was looking for some something else some, some companionship or whatever that's what i and so I, I just could tell so so be careful when you think that everybody is you know because they do uh something but they have they can have other motives they are not your neighbor but yet they have done things in a neighborly way because everywhere it is good bad evil is always there shaitan yeah. is going to try to manipulate you so yeah i just wanted to throw that in and be careful with you know you know, you may be neighborly and a person may do a neighborly act, but yeah. always pay, pay close attention and be wise, you know? Yeah, absolutely. I agree, brother. I definitely agree. Yeah, because a lot of people uh, wear masks, especially nowadays, you know. Oh, don't they? Yeah, this, they this, particular, this particular woman, once I put my foot down, then the anger came out. She mm. showed me when I told her no to something. No, I can't do mm. it. Then this she had the nerve to get like look at me mean and, and, and walk away. I'm like, that goes to show you that you undoing you undoing this what you did that time to help me wasn't about neighborly. It was it was a build up for something, you know what I mean? So so yeah, we just have to be careful. That's all. Hmm. Wow. All right. So brothers and sisters, all right, we're gonna move on to our next couple scriptures. Let me put it up on the screen for you. All right. 
Yeah. Is it still raining outside, bro? I, it looks cloudy. It does look like, yeah, yeah, it's raining, brother. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, me and the wife supposed to be going out a little later. You know, finally got a little little date date time. My mom will be watching the children for us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I praise Yahweh. I thank him for that because, you know, husband and wife, we need our, our, our alone time sometimes. Oh, yeah. You know, and, you know, just being in here with the children ripping and running all day. Yeah, it's. I'm looking yeah. forward to it. It just sucks yeah. that it rained today. <laughs> but it's yeah. all love. It's all love. Yeah. I'm just yeah. thankful for the time. You know what I mean? Yes, sir. All right. So this, brothers and sisters, this is uh first John 3, 11 to 24. It's a it's, it's not that long, but I wanted to bring this scripture out because it really touches on a lot of the uh of what we're really trying to bring out about loving your neighbor. And it goes in really, really deep. The apostle really hit it home with this one. So I'm going to start at around, uh, what I say, 11, and I'm going to read down to 24, and it reads this. 1 John chapter 3, verse 11. For this is the message that you heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. Not as Cain, who was of that wicked one, that's interesting, mm -hmm. and murdered his brother. And why did he murder him? Question mark. Because his works were evil. And his brothers was righteous. Do not marvel, brothers, my brothers, if the world hates you. We know that we have passed from death to life because we love the brothers. He who does not love his brother abides in death. Mm -hmm. And whosoever hates his brother is a murderer. And you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. Mm -hmm. Y'all hear that? If you are a murderer, you cannot enter eternal life. All right. Mm -hmm. That's even if you hate your brother in your heart, even if you hadn't done the, the actual act, if you even hate your brother, you cannot go into eternal life. Yahweh mm -hmm. is not having it. OK, so all y'all that say, you know, Yahweh loves everybody and he lets everybody to heaven. Like soon as you die, everybody's in heaven. Oh, they looking down on us. That's not true. Pay attention, mm -hmm. brothers and sisters. Whosoever hates his brother is a murderer. And mm -hmm. you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. By this we know love, because he laid down his life for us, and we also ought to lay down our lives for the brothers. I want to come back to that, but I'm going to finish reading this, and then I'm going to come back to this, this part of the scripture, number 16. But whosoever has this world's goods and sees his brothers in need and shuts his heart from him, how does he love, how does the love of Yahweh abide in him? My little children, let us not love in word or in tongue, but in deed and in truth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's how we love our brothers. We show, we show them our works. We do for them in deed and, in, and, and not just in mouth service. That's right. So it says in deed and in truth. And what, the, what, is, it, what is truth? That righteousness, that Torah is the truth, right? Mm -hmm. That sure is the truth. That's right. So we love our brothers and sisters in Yahshua. That's how you love in truth. And by mm -hmm. this, we know that we are in, of the truth and shall assure our hearts before him. But if our heart condemns us, Yahweh is greater than our heart and knows all things. Beloved, if our heart does not condemn us, we have confidence. We have confidence towards Yahweh. Let me read that again. Beloved, if our hearts does not condemn us, we have confidence towards Yahweh. And whatsoever we ask, we receive from him because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. It is pleasing to love your brothers and sisters. Come on. Come on it's pleasing to Yahweh. Yeah. And this is his commandment that we should believe on the name of his son, Yeshua HaMashiach, and love one another as he gave us commandment. Now, he who keeps his commandments abide in him and he and, and, and he in him also. And by this, we know that he abides in us by the Ruach or the spirit whom he has given us. All right. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to go, I wanted to revisit uh, 16 because this is really, really important. He said by this, we know love because he laid down his life for us. And right. we, ought, we also ought to lay down our lives for the brother. That's how you really, really know that your brother loves you or, or mm -hmm. your neighbor 
loves you, if you're willing to give your life for your brother. You know, me yeah. and Brother Eric, we know this very well. We give our life for our brothers. You yeah. know, you know yeah. Brother Eric, I don't want to speak too much on his own personal business, but he's a retired police officer, you know, mm -hmm. and he he, he he has given his his life trying to protect us where we worship. Mm -hmm. you, know, mm -hmm. you know, every Shabbat, he's there ready for mm -hmm. anything that walks through that door. You know, mm -hmm. this is how you really know that this brother, uh, Brother Betzel L, loves mm -hmm. his, his neighbor, loves his brothers and sisters because he is there ready to give his life. Mm -hmm. You know, we've done that on other occasions. Been there mm -hmm. for our brothers, ready to give our life for our brother to mm -hmm. show him this ain't just lip service. Yeah, it's okay to hear that you love your brother. It's okay. It's okay to hear. But you know what's better than that? Actually, show him like, look, man, I'm riding with you. Yeah. Am I coming against you? You think they, they got to go against me as well? Exactly. So if you ever say that you don't love your, you, you know, you don't, you, you know, you don't love me. That's not true. You know because. You, you, your actions should be able to show that brother or that sister that you actually do love them. Mm -hmm. you know, it should never even be a conversation. If you're doing the, the, the works of the Torah, if you're doing everything that you're supposed to do to show your neighbor that you love them, you know, it should, mm -hmm. never, it should never even come up. But, you know, this is how we show our brothers that we love them. Mm -hmm. you know, and when you love your brother and you're ready to give your a life for him, Yahweh sees that. Yeah. You know, the Almighty yeah. sees that. And that is well pleasing in his sight because, yeah. like he said, he came down in the flesh and gave his life for everybody. How many of us can do that? You know, all of us mm -hmm. that go to these churches every Sunday, are you really willing to give your life for your brother or your sister? That's right. You, you know, mm -hmm. can, could, could you do that? I can do mm -hmm. it. I know brother, brother Betzoel can do it because I've seen him do it. Ready to go. You know, mm -hmm. what I mean? so it's, it's more it's more to this than just lip service. And that's what it say right there in uh, verse 18. My little children, let us not love in word or tongue, but in deed and in truth. All right. So my deeds, Brother Betzel, our deeds speak for themselves. You know, yeah. things for my neighbors in my neighborhood. I do it out of the kindness of my heart. I'm not looking for anybody to in, do anything for me. You know what that's I mean? Right. When I yeah. go to. Depot or, or Walmart or wherever I go, if I see uh, an elder woman, an elder or who, who's struggling to, to carry their bags or push their cart, I ask them, you know, do they need help? For instance, I was at Home Depot the other day getting my material for my job in the morning, and it was a um, it was a it was a Gentile help, helping out an Israelite elder woman, and she was having um, trouble with her cart. And she basically was paying this man because she had all these floorboards that she was stacking up on the cart. So she paid him to do it. I asked mm -hmm. her, are you okay? She said, yeah, I'm okay. Thank you. Of course, the Gentile man gave me side eye, thought I was trying to take his, his little job from him or what, I, what have you. No, brother, I'm good. I don't, I don't need no, I don't need this the, the little money that you just got. Because right. just like in true fashion, once he stacked that up, you know, if, if she's struggling to stack it, of course, she's going to struggle to push it into the store. So I waited a minute just to see what would happen because I could discern the situation. And just as I suspected, as soon as he got the money, he he left. He fl he, he fleed. So I went hmm. over there to him. I went over there to her. I said, you know, don't don't worry about it, ma'am. I, I, I'll help you take it in there. She was like, thank you. Thank you. How much do I got to give you? You don't have to give me anything. That's right. You don't have to nah, give me anything. At the end of the day, I love you. You know what I mean? I yeah. you're, my elder, you're, you're an elder mother in my nation. You know, that's right. she, she, don't, she probably don't know it. She probably not a, a awakened Israelite, but that's okay. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm, 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 I'm. You know, Yahweh gave me health and activity of my limbs. I'm going to use it to help anybody in our nation I can. That's right. And while, while that heathen, that devil, ran away from him. After he got yeah. the money, that that really disgusted me, brother. Yeah, that's that's what that's 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 in the, that's it's more of that and sadly, it's more of that in the world than is of you. Yeah, you know that's why we we're doing what we're doing too because what we want to do is we want to um, produce more of us 
than them. You know, we yeah. want to at least attempt that. You know what I mean? Because I know the scripture says this, and because I don't want somebody to think that we are not aware of this. You know, because you because people may critique this and say, you know, they you know they 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 wet behind the ear, they naive, they don't know. Because the scripture says that, uh, you know, wide is the road that leads to destruction, and many to go there, and narrow is the gate that leads to life, and it's few that find it. We understand that, and we know that it's going to be few that find salvation. Yeah. But that, but who are we to pick and choose who's going to find salvation? What we're doing is just doing our part and sharing, um, sharing what we, the truth, and the road to salvation with people, and and whoever, whoever. Uh, grabs hold of it, all, all praise and honor to Yahweh. We take no credit in that because it says that one plants, one waters and Yahweh gives the increase. And so yeah. what we're doing is we're planting and watering, you know, we're doing, that's all we're doing. So, you know, um, yeah, you know, this, these, these, uh, these videos we're making, we're, we're all we're doing is conversing before you and, um, trying to reach out to, as you know, those who are, who are lost, who have been, um, fooled and corrupted, uh, and uh, and um, they are have, is is done because of passed down traditions. Yep, passed down traditions, and you in a religion, and um, it's been passed down to you by the slave master. You taken directly, taken from the enemy, taken what the enemy has to give you. Those who raped you, murdered you, slaughtered you. That everything that they can do to you left nothing, left nothing off the table. What they have done to you and your people, but yet they 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 gonna get they gave you a religion, and this mm -hmm. told you this is the way of salvation, yep. and it's flawed big time. Okay, so I I, I mean so I, I I'm speaking from a person, and and, and brother Makadal, we're speaking from it because we were also fooled in it. So, I mean, come on now. So, you, you know, it, it, we walked it. Okay. So yeah. we have every right to stand up and fight against it and, and teach people to turn from it. We got every right to do that. We should have um, a passion to do it and compassion on our uh, brothers and sisters that are still left in it. Okay. So when Harriet Tugman got up off the plantation and she was courageous and she took the chance because of her a brave heart and trust in the Almighty, and she made it to her freedom. But you know what she did? That's why she's my. That's why she is my favorite. I'm gonna say it right here. My modern day here. First of all, Yahshua, Yahweh, Yahshua is everything to me first. But when we talk about modern day heroes to me, of course I have Moses and all of it. But I'm talking about modern day. Modern it day. is that that woman would mm -hmm. be mine. She went yeah. back. This is and we and we can't compare it to what she did because she was in danger of being not only murdered but tormented before she was murdered, and so skint alive and everything and put in so much pain and brutality. But she went back and took all all that all those chances to bring people into the light. So I can't compare what she did to what we're doing because we're in the safety of our homes, but we're still not safe because even though Staton is angry with what we're doing. But what we're saying is, is that we made it out of that. And what we're doing is we're trying to reach back and go back to the plantations like Harriet Tugman did, to use that as an analogy, and yeah. come and say, we do that whistle, come on, let's go to the road of truth. Yeah. Because them slaves, a lot of them didn't know they were slaves. They didn't know that it was, they were, they, they, they were in pain and suffering, but they didn't know that they were taught that this is your fate. This is how you're supposed to be. And that's the same thing with uh, Christianity. People are taught, this is it. This is what you're supposed to do. Yeah. And uh, since you brought up Harriet, uh, um, man, you, you you heard that song, Stand Up? It, it's, it's like the theme song in uh, in a movie, Harriet. Okay, you know, I probably uh, did. Yeah, I the probably theme probably song. Did. Do you know the, the actress that played Harriet is actually the one singing that song? Oh, no. Yeah, when we get off, man, I'm gonna I'm I'm show it to you. I will play it on 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 YouTube, but I'm not familiar with all the copyright laws yet on yeah. YouTube, so I don't want to give us no okay. problem for posting this because otherwise I would play it. You know, okay. I do see cer certain YouTube content creators uh, play music and stuff like that, and then they'll just put the um the publishing information in the uh, description. But I'm not familiar with it yet because otherwise I would play the song. 
Okay. You you know what I'm talking about when you okay. when you hear it. But yeah, it was it was just amazing to me. So brothers and sisters, also one thing that uh brother Eric said, you know, I'm I want to show y'all something. This shirt that I got on today. Y'all see this? We built we this, this for free. free. <laughs> yeah. We built yeah. this for free. Come I got on, this. Man. I got this shirt from uh, Angela Ra, who used to be on uh, CNN. Yeah, she was, of, she was one of the black uh, women that used to come on there, be giving them people the business. You know what yeah. I mean? She's an yeah. uh, activist, um, public figure. But uh, yeah, she was. Uh, she was. She was giving these shirts. I think it was like last year. Or so now I went on and got one because um, we got to understand this, brothers and sisters. Uh, when when we came to this country, of course, like we mentioned, we came in uh, shackles and chains. And, uh, you know, we, we had hard bondage because of of, of uh, transgression. Right. It was part of our punishment to be sent here by the uh, people that our fathers didn't know. So along the way, uh, serving our, our bondage, you know, come to, to, to actually come out of that chattel slavery. You know, the people of this land made a deal with our ancestors. And part mm -hmm. of that deal was to give us 40 acres and a, and a mule to be able to use the uh, our, our abilities. Our, our might and our strength to help them fight against the South, the North mm -hmm. against the South, you know, mm -hmm. and, then, and then this is the promise that I'm going to give you, you know, were they our neighbors? Come on, That's man. my question. Was the North our neighbors? Come on, because man. if the North was our neighbor, when they made that deal with us after the outcome of the Civil War, then we should have we should have had our land, you know, but they, where, yeah. where, where did the land go? They reneged on it. They took it back. That's they used right. our might, they used our strength, they used our numbers to help them win. And yep. then when they won, they turned their back on us. Yep. Because neighbors don't do that. Exactly. You know, so that's why we got to stop looking at everybody as our neighbor, every single body. You know, when I was in, I, I'm, I'm going to talk about myself real quick. And I'm going to try to make this as brief as possible. You know, I grew up in a Baptist church, Greater Harvest Baptist Church. So if anybody uh, listening to this, if you go to Graver Harvest, Harvest Baptist Church, my family, the Egglestons, they helped found this church, okay, along with several other families. These families came together and founded this church, Greater Harvest Baptist Church. And, and, and in that church, you know, part of the doctrine, we was led to believe we su we supposed to love everybody, mm -hmm. okay? Or not, not just your neighbor, we supposed to love everybody, everybody, your enemy, Love, love everybody. And, you know, in the upcoming weeks, we're going to go into what does it actually mean to love your enemy. But today mm -hmm. the focus is about loving your neighbor. So I was I, I got to be honest with you, with, with you all. You know, I'm, and I'm, that's why I'm saying I'm, I'm this is my own testimony. I'm, I'm only speaking for myself. You know what I was taught in that Baptist church was a complete lie. OK. Mm -hmm. and, and what it does is it actually hurts you more than you than you 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 imagine because it makes you you know love a, a people that don't love you back that is very very dangerous yes you know, for you to submit to a people that don't love you back that means we're we're basically you know at their beck and call to do whatever they tell us to do and give us scraps at the table all while we're treated like trash but we are constantly told that we're supposed to love these people Exactly. You know, the people that are in control in this in this land, in control in this in this world, you know, they have their kingdom, they have their riches, they have everything they need. They don't mm -hmm. really, they don't need us. Okay. No. They right. don't need us. You know, the only reason that, that they keep us here and it's is it's spiritual, you know, and I don't want to get too deep for y'all, but the reason why they keep us here is because of who we are. All right, mm -hmm. because they know that. Yahweh ain't going to destroy this land until we are in safety. Mm -hmm. All right? So we are their lifeline. And that's the only reason why they keep us here. It ain't because they love you. Mm -hmm. They keep you here for their, for their protection. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you know, look, look all throughout slavery, how much they hated our ancestors, how much they hated us through Jim Crow and segregation. You know, so if they hate us this much, why do you think that they want us here now? You don't think they still hate you? The that's haters right. do that. That hate is, yeah. is hereditary. Yeah. DNA. Yes, true. DNA teach us this hate, but do you think that 
they just want you and just hanging around because they 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 just want to give you love all of a sudden no no that's not why so this is my point we got to learn to understand that these people are not our neighbor okay our neighbor the the, the, the people that striving towards the same goal that you are that's looking for that's right. peace alone and and, and 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 willing to worship the almighty Yahweh and his son, Yeshua HaMashiach. These are the people that are your neighbor. The oh, same people that are, are, are here to, to show favor to the most high, like he shows favor to us. All right. To put him first above anything. All right. If you got, if you got people in your circle that don't put Yahweh, Yeshua first, then they're not your, they're not your neighbor. Okay. On, now, now if they, if they know him as, as, as God and, and Jesus at this time, we, this is what we're doing this for. Because we're trying to bring y'all to the name, we're trying to bring y'all to understand it. Then yeah, they could be your neighbor because they're ignorantly worshiping the wrong name. They don't, they're not in the right name. But we're gonna get you there. We're gonna get you there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You got anything else on that one, brother? Brother, you covered it. Okay, so I'm gonna um, I'm gonna take this one away. We're gonna go to our closing scripture for the day. You know, we just want to bring this stuff to y'all attention. You know, and uh. Yeah, brother. Romans 13 and 10. Yeah, there it is. It says this one is really self-explanatory. Love does no harm to a neighbor. Therefore, love is fulfillment of the Torah the, or the law. The Torah is the law. So, so, so look, it's telling you right then and there, a neighbor is speaking, you know, how we should treat a neighbor. Mm -hmm. Love does no harm to a neighbor. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, if you don't have, if we don't have love in our heart, just just know that we don't have the Almighty Creator or His Son, right? right. And so, you know, and and then it's is from what we went through here today, we we see what a neighbor is all about, the value of a neighbor, you yeah. know, um, you being a neighbor and you having a neighbor, you know, us subjectively being a neighbor in our heart to others and also being the receiver of someone who has a neighborly heart towards you. So yeah, um, but it's saying right here, love does no harm to that neighbor. So now you, we have to, we have to look at that now, look at that. Now, some of us will fool ourselves and be like, huh, you know, I'm neighborly, you know, I love people, but yet at the same time, you harm the people. Now I'll give examples like and a neighbor does not necessarily mean a person is not in your family. Your family member should have a neighborly heart towards you, like even your spouse. So let's let's go here. Um, you you know your 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 family member believe that they're neighborly towards you because you know you get together sometime, you call each other, or you might uh, uh have a cookout and visit each other's houses. But then you call and borrow some money or something like that from your your, your family member. They, that's something that they work for. And then you turn around and buy it from them and never pay it back to them. Mm. Don't have no concern about, I'm just giving examples that I experienced. Had, you know, give, have no concern about whether they need it or not, but they were neighborly when they gave it to you they got bills and everything else just like you have and you just think nothing of it you go out and buy buy things that are unnecessary and everything but never even think to uh to uh pay it back so right here you know that's not love and and that and that right there that's harm you know because you basically you take it from them you know so yeah that's not love so and it's not being neighborly you know so Love does no harm to a neighbor, you know, so you you basically not even considering that person as a neighbor when you willing to harm them. So that's just one example is many that I can throw up here. And I'm sure Brother McIntyre can put up here. I just want to give, you know, some real, you know, real time things, you know, to point to the scripture so you can look. And I'm saying I'm speaking, look at yourself. Look at me. Let me look at myself. You know, am I am I? Uh, uh, working in that type of mindset, but yet thinking I'm good, I'm a neighbor when I'm willing to be like that. And it can go, it goes on and on and on. Like, you know, uh, you know, you, 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 you are looking at lustfully at someone else, at, at, at someone else's wife, you know, 
It could be someone you know, or you know, or looking lustfully at someone else's husband. You know, is that neighborly? That's not neighborly. You know, that's you're not being a neighbor. That's not love. You know, you know, that's harm. You shouldn't do that. So if that if these poisons are in your heart, ask, you know, pray for forgiveness. You repent of it and and ask for healing, and you you turn from it. You have the power to turn from. We have the power to turn from these things. Absolutely. When you when you take some alcohol. And you drink it and you get behind the wheel of a car. Oh, yeah, that's not loving your neighbor. Okay. These things, when you when you take and you fire that heroin in your arm, you know, and all the things that it, it, it come with it, okay. Disease also, you know, it requires lifestyle of breaking into things, stealing and all that kind of stuff. That's not being neighborly. So I mean, I know people get addicted, but we have to think that before you get addicted. We have to think of these things too, you know, um, that just, just so when you start wanting to play around with getting high and you're not even addicted, but you like, yeah, man, I'm, I'm, I'm you know, I'm, I'm going to get messed up. Yeah. We're going to do this and do that. Start thinking right off the top that, you know, about neighbor, loving your neighbor. When you do that to yourself, you're not loving your neighbor. Why? Because eventually it's going to be a problem to, to other people. Yeah. Brother, I'll stop right there. Do you have anything to add? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to try to make it as short as possible. Um, you know, in Baltimore, you know, uh, a lot of times they give us the, uh, a bad rap for having such a high uh, drug and uh, crime rate here in Baltimore, you know, because of the heroin uh, drug trade. You know, um, growing up, you know, we, we, we used to hear the term, you know, Baltimore murder land, you know, or harm city is what we was called. You know, that that is so disappointing to me, man. Because, you know, we are we are soldiers in the same fight. OK, mm -hmm. you know, you know, black boys growing up in the hood, you know, in these neighborhoods, you know, and, and not just in the hood, even in, in the suburban areas. You know, we are all the same people. You know, some of us may have a little bit more than others, but we all mm -hmm. are growing up under the same conditions because it don't matter if you're in the city or in the suburbs. They hate you just as much as they hate me. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. the, the point that I'm getting at is, brothers and sisters, we have to come out of this this way of, of what we were taught. These uh this this thing of hating each other and, and and pointing these guns at each other and hurting and harming each other because that's not Torah. That's not the that's not the law. The law is selling about, drugs to each other. I want right. to add that. Selling drugs Definitely. to each other. We that, gotta stop you, this stuff. Thank you, because you know that was on my mind as well. That thank you, because when you sell drugs, you're poisoning your brothers and sisters. You know, yes. you're killing them. And yeah. remember, remember what I read earlier. You know, if you hate your brother, because if you're giving them drugs to, to, to destroy their body, destroy their mind, then you hate them. And no, yeah. and, and if you hate your brother, you're a murderer, and no murderer can enter into the, the kingdom of heaven. Right. You know, so you're you're taking away your own salvation, you're destroying your brother, you're destroying uh somebody's son, somebody's nephew, somebody's niece, somebody's daughter, all for what? Because you're getting, you're trying to put a little money in your pocket. You know, we all have to work. Get a job. Mm -hmm. You know, do what you got to do. You know, if you got to get two jobs, do it. When I was younger, I had two jobs sometimes. You know, right. you have mm -hmm. to do what you got to do until you That's get right. to that, that point where you can get your career and and, and, and make a, a decent amount of money for your family. In the meantime, right, you know, you, we don't have to stay stagnated in these conditions. You know, for some of our brothers and sisters in the lower economy neighborhoods, you know. In some of these uh, messed up conditions, you don't have to stay there. Just work your way to to come out of those conditions, and know that we are we are soldiers in the same fight. You know that's fighting against this white supremacy in this country, uh, fighting against this worldwide hate that they have towards us. You know that's why Yahshua said, you know, we'll be hated by all nations for His name's sake. Mm -hmm. You know mm -hmm. that's a reason because of that. You know they hung Him on a tree, and that's all that's they right. try to do is hang us on trees or kill us you know, by, by their enforcers in, in the street, like with dogs and, and, and cattle. But we got to we gotta just remember that we are all soldiers in the same fight. We all fighting towards one common goal, and that's liberation and salvation for our people, for ourselves, and just come out of these conditions, you know? Right. That's all I really wanted to say. Only The only other thing I, I, I would say, if you have any um, closing statements you want to say, brother, one thing I want to give is a testimony to, to everybody that's watching who uh, don't really truly understand the work that me and brother Betzo L is doing 
you know, this is really, really working. OK, now we've already gave y'all uh, testimony on how this 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 page is, is really shining a light to those that are in darkness and people are, are converting and coming to this way of life. You know, I just had a brother I spoke with this week. OK, I'm not going to give his name. I'm not going to give too much of his business. But this is a brother that is in Christianity. Um, his mom and his sister is a Hebrew Israelite already. And he didn't really gravitate too much to it. He he told me that he listens to his mother and he respects his mother. He loves his mother. But for some reason, it's the way that I talk to him that he's really starting to gravitate towards the truth. You know, one, just real quick, um, we was talking about the dietary law. And when we finished talking about the dietary law, he told me, you know what, Brother Mark, this weekend, I'm, I'm going to go home and I'm going to throw away all that shrimp that's in my freezer. Wow. Yeah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. God. Praise God. Just take your time, brother. A little bit Hallelujah. at a time. You know, you don't have to take this book and, and, and try to read it all in one sitting or Hallelujah. all in one month. You know, not even all in one year. Just take your time. A little bit at a time. You know, don't over, overburn yourself. You know, just slowly come back to Yahweh because that's what he all wants us to do. He wants us to turn to him and he'll turn to you. Hallelujah. 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 So, yeah, and so I'm going to close out with this because I want to make sure that we make sure that we link this understanding. Um, so our goal is to, again, to bring a light to the Gentiles and that those who are, who are in Christianity. Yeah. Um, so look now um, this even with this, this situation with the neighbor, Christianity started off by not being a neighbor. First of all, Christianity was brought brought to us through enslavement. Is that a neighbor? Right. No, we. I answer that question. It's a rhetorical question. It's a and the answer is no. You already know it's no. Okay, they had slave dungeons, and they had the church over top the slave dungeon, and they even um, had our ancestors uh, participate in church as they were already in chains and going to go into the ships. But before they even went into the ships, they they were uh, calling this stuff Christianizing them or bringing them into Christianity right there. And so they were using this book for ignoring the understanding what a neighbor is. So they, you know, so right then and there, this, that right there shows that what, what, what Christianity is all about. Okay, it, it was it a neighbor to us? Enslaved our ancestors? Hmm. Was it a neighbor? No, it wasn't. So this is the kind of stuff that we, 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 we showing you. A neighbor, which this word does not belong to Christianity, first of all. The word of Yahweh does not belong to Christianity. This is the Torah. This is the words of Yahweh and Son Yahshua. Does not belong to Christianity. That is a religion. Okay. These words are a way of life, a way of living. And so we go back to this neighbor thing and let's let's get look at it. Were they neighbors? And I'm gonna say it again. Everything that you heard today, everything that you heard today, what a neighbor is and how you should be a neighbor and what qualities you must have to be identified as a neighbor. When Christianity was shown to our ancestors, was that a neighbor? You gotta ask yourself that question. So why would I then identify with that then when it is the opposite of a neighbor? I'm done. We gotta think, we gotta think, we gotta think about it brothers and sisters and we gotta think about it you know, and reason, not think about it with emotion, okay? Because a lot of us, and I was the same way in Christianity, I thought with my emotions because my love for Jesus Christ was so strong that no matter what you tell me, I don't care, I don't care what you say that's in that Bible. Mm -hmm. This is how I, my mind was conditioned. Mm -hmm. You know, so when your mind is conditioned that no matter what, you don't want to hear what anybody have to say. We have to start opening our eyes and opening our ears because our time is running short. We don't have a lot of time to play around. You know, we have to come to this truth and we have to do it with a, with a sincere urgency because, OK, we don't want you to try to speed and cram everything in. But we want you to we want to help you, you know, open your eyes so you can turn to Yahweh so he can sincerely, you know, look inside your heart and say, OK, this is one of mine, because that's what Yahweh does. He looks at the heart. Okay, and he wants you to turn to him. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. So I think that 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 sums it up.
I don't have anything else. You got anything else, brother? Brother, I got so much more, but we're going to stop right here until the next time. Okay. <laughs> good to me. Hallelujah. Yes. Again, Hallelujah. we want to give all praise, honor, power, reverence, esteem to the most high creator of the heavens and the earth, the almighty Yahweh, in the name of his only begotten son, Yeshua HaMashiach, the light of the world, and now soon to come king, redeemer, and deliverer. Hallelujah. 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 Shalom, brother. Yep, Sloan, Sloan family. <laughs>